a band that's been a staple in the music industry for over a decade. A group of musicians that define original. A lyricist that is worshipped for his words. Seven critically acclaimed albums. A band symbol that is tattooed on hundreds of fans across the country. These statements describe only one band, and that band is Red Wanting Blue. We're sitting here with Columbus-based rock band Red Wanting Blue in their warehouse facility and studio. I'd like to thank you guys so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you very well. All right, so let's start off with some introductions. Uh, I'm Scott. I sing for the band. I'm John. I play the guitar. I'm Greg. I play guitar and keyboards, and I sing. I'm Eddie, and I play the drums. And I'm Mark. I play the bass and the Chapman stick. I like to consider you guys a groundbreaking staple in the New York music scene. I know you guys have a growing fan base there. Um, how many years have you guys been playing in New York? I would say probably about five years. One of the best places I think we've ever played is uh, the Bowery Ballroom. And we've done Mercury Lounge, which is really small but very cool. We just recently did a show up there at the Knitting Factory. I'd like to know, while you're on the road, if you were to be a family unit, who would be the mother, the father, and then of the three children, who's the baby? Who is the oldest child and who has middle children syndrome? I, I would probably say I'm more of the mom. Sometimes I think of, um, of you as more of a godfather figure. Yeah, definitely a caretaker. I, I would think of Mark McCullough as, as uh, more of the submissive father. <laughs> gets, <laughs> he gets kicked around a little bit by his wife, Greg Graham, over here. <laughs> what do you think, Mom? I agree. I'm definitely the nagging wife. Uh, this is my awful child. Scott's my husband, who I look up to. Eddie definitely is, yeah, he's the good kid. So yeah, that's our family. It's great. It's a warm family. So what I really want to take a moment to point out is that you guys just released an amazing live double disc album and DVD called The Warehouse Sessions. Um, Scott, would you tell us just a little bit about the concept behind The Warehouse Sessions? We've always been a very listener-supported band. Um, we are independent and uh, everything that we do is pretty mom and pop. We've released seven studio records. We've never done a live record at all and we've had a lot of people ask us uh, if, if we are ever going to do that, would we please do that? The timing seemed right and um, we wanted to give something to our fans that represented the way we play live. There's an art form to a live record and there's an art form to doing a studio record. Uh, so what we did is instead of having it at a, uh, like a bar or a club, uh, we wanted to do something more homegrown. We originally started it with just 50 kids. We just wanted to have 50 kids, uh, but it sold out very quickly. Uh, so we wanted to have to put 100 people in, and it all worked out wonderfully. Uh, and I'm, I'm real proud of it. So what I really want to focus on, um, and what I think our viewers are extremely interested in, is the actual songs. And could you tell me a little bit about uh, Space Time and how you dreamt that up? The second verse of that song, Space Time, is one that uh, has a lot to do with travel from north, south, east, west. You know, it's about constantly being uh, at odds with what we do. I've raided the tombs out west. I've tried my best. And the East was a beast to comb over I've headed north and chased my tail back and forth But I have never been as sad as I was when I had Heard the love songs of the South They shook the metal right out of my mouth one of the newest songs that you guys have written is uh, Finger in the Air. Could you tell me a little bit about that song? Again, we're uh, an independent band, um, and we've been doing it for a long time. We love it very, very much, but we are having to deal with 
things that you know signed bands don't have to deal with. And that song kind of touches on uh, some of the frustrations that we have as being a band, you know, trying to get out. Say give up and go back where you belong. Dream is for the dead. The road is too long. Middle finger in the air, I'm still here. Some people try to find their own voice. Uh, and then there's those people who feel that they found it, and then they just want it to be heard. The road stay the same way for sinners and saints, I believe. Begin us test the water and suffer the pains. You don't know what I've seen. You don't know what I've seen. I know that that song has touched a lot of the people that have heard it. I, I notice at your live shows you get a huge response on that song. And so on behalf of all of those people, I just want to thank you for writing that. Well, thank you. I think a lot of the kids actually just more than anything enjoy, you know, giving the finger. Yeah. <laughs> all simultaneously, a giant yeah. crowd of people giving the finger at once, which is uh, actually quite inspiring to see it happen. <laughs> it is. It's completely moving. And on a lighter note, could you tell me a little bit about the song You Are My Las Vegas, another fan favorite? This is a song about getting drunk and broke in Las Vegas. It's a very upbeat, uh, kind of quirky song that we wrote uh, while we were traveling out west and we found ourselves at, uh, in Las Vegas uh, with no money. You know, we wound up running around, getting drunk, trying to grab drinks from uh, the casinos, acting like we were high rollers. And uh, when that didn't work out, we hung out and wrote a song. Vegas, Vegas in life. Baby, you're my Las Vegas And I don't know what I'd do without you Just hope and pray that your chips fall my way real soon so Mark, I know you're the bass player for the band. I know one of the more unconventional instruments you play is the Chapman stick. Could you tell us what that is? Yeah, it's a, it's a 10 string instrument. It's basically just a big two by four, um, lots of frets on it, and uh, you play by tapping it. Um, I, I don't know if you're gonna be okay with me asking you about this, but I do know that you're interested in the synthesizer, and I heard a little something about a band called Return of the Synth. Yeah. It's actually, Could you tell me about that? It's more diabolical than that. It's called Revenge of the Synth. And uh, yeah, I, we had a lot of time off last summer, and, uh, and uh, I uh, was able to dabble into some of our other guitar players' keyboards and uh, a lot of old 70s synth sounds in there, and it got me inspired. And then again, my prog rock influences came out, and uh, Revenge of the Synth was born. Um, Scott actually heard some of it and used some of the, uh, the songs, and they're now Red Morning Blues songs as well. And which songs are those? Uh, the World is Over and uh, Space Time Continues. So Eddie, you're the drummer for the band, and Pasty's in a G-string, the cover that you guys do, Tom Waits. I know you pull some a big metal piece over your chest. What is that? It, it's a washboard, or I think the technical term is called a frottier, so it's a uh, Cajun Zydeco instrument. Um, I play it with a couple of drum keys. And... Yeah. Do you guys have any interesting stories from being on the road? When we were heading out west, you see these signs for miles and miles that say home of like the six-legged cow, you know, the Russian boar, the two-foot donkey, and for some reason I really desire to see the two-foot donkey. Apparently you're not supposed to feed the donkey, but I put my hand into the donkey, he was very disgruntled, he was upset with me. Uh, and I, I think I had a bracelet on my wrist, and thank God I did, because he bit my bracelet instead of biting my wrist. Lord knows I'd have no hand probably at this point. They didn't, you know, do anything for us. I was hoping I could get a free mesh hat or something, but I got. We have a bumper sticker somewhere on our, on our doors of our trailer. But that's about it. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, you can't be in the circus if you don't want to leave town. No destinations to fall from us now Tell me where you wanna go Tell me where you wanna go Or wherever you put your So we just saw Red Wanting Blue play live at the Newport Music Hall in Columbus, Ohio. I want to again thank the band for having us. If you want more information, please visit their MySpace site at myspace.com slash redwantingblue. For Web 2.0 Television, New York City, it's Jenna Pache. Stay tuned. Girl, I let you stay.